um, so, and also, um, I found out you actually have, you're an agent too for, is it three people now or do you grow it a little bit more? Grew it a little bit more. Um, the agency is very much like how I operate my consulting business. Um, mm -hmm. I talk about it when people want to talk about it and then inevitably, uh, randomly an athlete is interested, just like a potential consulting client is interested. And I just share with them how I do what I do from learning a little bit from others and then from building my own processes based on my experience in business. Um, so I work with five athletes now. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. So, um, do you obviously like, um, uh, Arian Lowen's one of, one of your, I wish she, I think she was your first, yeah, first, yeah. Eight, first person. So I, I absolutely like, she's awesome. Like I, you know, I, every time I listen to her on a podcast or just like, you know, watch her on like a video, it's like, it's, she's super nice. And she's like, always available to talk to people too, which is super cool. So, um, how did, how did that get together? Yeah. Um, shout out to Ariel, man. She's like the people's champ. Yeah. Um, but so the Zalos games first year when I, you know, serendipity is this wonderful, beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I was acquainted with Jason who owns X endurance or he's CEO of X endurance, um, owns lab management. But at the time I didn't know about lab management or anything like that. I just knew about X Endurance, the supplement company. And I knew Jason, we were like friends on social media. We would DM back and forth from time to time. Seemed like a great guy. Uh, I guess he, maybe he thought the same of me. So we just stayed in contact. I thought of the Zalos games and I messaged him out of nowhere. because I think he liked a photo and I was like, oh, let me hit up Jason. And I said, hey, would you be interested in sponsoring the Zalos games? It's an online competition I'm thinking about starting. He was mm -hmm. like, yes, but also let me put you in touch with Cooper. And so Cooper Marsh, was like Jason's partner at lab management. He had brought Cooper on as a, as an agent and Cooper just crushed it. Um, so he's kind of the main, the main guy at lab management. Um, and so me and Cooper got acquainted. Cooper introduced me to a handful of athletes, like digitally, like, you know, introducing them to the Zalos games and stuff like that. Um, anyways, throughout that process, hosted the Zalos games, Ariel Lowen won it. And I did a bunch of debriefs with the athletes that won the competition, at least the ones that spoke English. Yeah. And um, just to get feedback, what did you like about it? What didn't you like about it? And Ariel and me just, we got along well. She was really helpful with giving her feedback. And um, she's a Christian. I'm a Christian. I remember her at the CrossFit Games the year prior and people in the stands being like, Ariel, wearing like these white t-shirts where they just drew Ariel Lowen on them. So I knew who she was and she was a sleeper in the industry, honestly. Oh yeah, won, of course. Yeah. Like she won 13th at the games. Um, and so... Uh, I looked into her story. She had a really interesting story. So her and I had a conversation and this is prior to me being an agent. Um, I said, Ariel, you, you don't have representation. You should really pursue representation. I, I think you, you're leaving a lot on the table. Like maybe you won't make millions, but um, you, you know, I don't think she was making anything at the time. So like anything better than nothing. Right. So um, she reached out to lab and that's when lab reached out to me. Like, why don't you work with Ariel? And I thought that's a perfect way to start. Um, Cause I, didn't necessarily just want to be an agent for the sake of being an agent, like yeah. calling yourself that and not actually having a, a successful case study. And so because me and Ariel have these shared values and because I had a passion for helping her because she didn't have, she wasn't like switching agents. She, you know what I mean? Like um, if we could both learn together and if I ended up really sucking, no loss on her end. And if she ended up actually, she, she just needed to continue to do what she's doing, which she does great. Yeah. So it was really on me. Like if I suck at this thing, she can go with someone else. And if I'm good at it, then I get to learn and maybe replicate that later on. And so I didn't have any ambitions of working with others for a, for a long time. I wanted to really prove to myself that I was good at this thing. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that I'm necessarily good, but, uh, but I've had some success with her and, and she's done really well for herself, you know, because obviously a lot of her brand partnerships are, built because of her athletic prowess and her personality. So um, I would say she made it kind of easy for me. But anyway, <laughs> a couple of people reached out and I began to work with a couple more people. And so now I'm um, honored to work with a couple more athletes, Caitlin Van Ziel out of Australia, who's mm. for one in Oceania right now, Oceania, um, going into the quarterfinals, which is so exciting. Uh, so exciting. She was at the games the past two years on a team and she went to the games individually the year before that. And so just got this great track record. She's working with Justin Cutler at Underdogs Athletics, which is how we serendipitously got introduced. Um, Sasha Nieves, uh, you know, technically second fittest in South America, fittest in Argentina, 
now working with the proven team, um, you know, picked as a favorite coming out of South America, going to the games, mm-hmm. uh, Riley Beebe, who's a teenager, right? So we're not like aggressively pursuing contracts left and right. Um, really the focus is to make sure that she's as taken care of as she can be, and that she's not maybe being taken advantage of by brands and things like that. Me and her dad developed a relationship at the games. We just met randomly in the gym and they ended up being a parent of a, of an elite athlete. So we stayed in touch and ended up working together. And then Andre Houdet out of Europe. Oh, very cool. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. um, just a, just a genius uh, of a person mm-hmm. and a really cool dude to work with. So yeah, that's, those are my current, uh, clients that nice. I get to, work with. yeah, it's, it's, it's really fulfilling. Yeah. So uh, are, are, are a lot of like companies reaching out to them asking for like, uh, promo codes and stuff like that like how do, so how does that work they like just say like a company reaches out to like ariel lowen and then you does she send the information over to you to kind of look it over and then you go back to them like how, how does it work for you know the athlete agent to you know business yeah i you know i can't speak to generally how it works because um i don't know what all the other agents are doing but um i know what i do and it's not like Ariel or Andre are getting DMs left and right from all these brands. And then they're just sending them to me. Cause honestly, at the end of the day, if that's how it worked then they wouldn't really need me too much. Yeah. Um, I spent a lot of time building relationships, doing outbound communication, trying to match brands with the person I'm working with. So with Kate, for example, we looked at what are all the brands in Australia that she really meshes well with that she, her values align with that. Yeah see her promoting i could see her on the website of this coffee company or this shoe company or whatever right so we start I, what i do is i try to start endemically like okay sasha's from south america what are some south american brands where we can create a win-win relationship same with europe and andre etc um but yeah i mean sometimes a company will message kate or ariel and she'll send that to me and then i will communicate with that company and say hey thank you so much for your interest I'd love to jump on a call and hear more about your brand. I did some research. I'd love to hear what you're interested in doing with so-and-so. Um, so that's kind of how it works. Um, the promo codes is great. Like, but at the end of the day, my ambition is to build um, a living for these athletes, but yeah. a justifiable living. I don't, you know, we're not just going to ask for a bunch of money for no reason. We're going to try to create an equal exchange, mm-hmm. but um sometimes a promo code is a part of that for sure. Really the kind of the, the goal is like to make sure that they're not just pushing promo codes like that. They're, we have, you know, partnerships with these brands where we can build together. Cause a lot of the companies in CrossFit are small. Yeah. Very um, small. Yeah. So, yeah. So there's a lot of nuance to it though. Every conversation looks different. You know, a conversation with a shoe company is not going to be the same as a conversation with a grip company um, or a thumb tape company versus a supplement company. Right. Like it's all like, learning about the product that they sell, um, trying to identify what their markets are. Does their market align with the athlete's current market? Um, are they trying to expand their market? So does my athlete have a different market that they could begin to market to whatever. Right. So like a lot mm-hmm. of just fun, like boring business stuff to people that don't like it, but fun <laughs> business stuff to me. Yeah. Um, is there any, any, um, company that you would like to ha- get into the CrossFit space to help out athletes and maybe, you know, make their brand a little bit bigger? Hmm. or or a company or companies you'd like to work with uh there's a lot man but i you know i feel like it would be nice the first company that came to mind was gatorade um not that that's like my final answer but like there's these big brands that are in big sports that like like monster slash rank came into crossfit and that's great too because Although some people have kickback on that. It's like, we, we need money. Mm-hmm. Like sport needs money. Yeah. Right. Like, um, it's like, how does anything grow? It needs to eat, <laughs> you know, like, so um, you got to feed the thing and, and this a sport eats money. But <laughs> um, So like, when I look at a thing like Gatorade, it's this, people are drinking it no matter what anyways, whether it's powder or it's the zero calorie or it's the regular or it's the new energy thing or it's the Gatorade protein, Gatorade protein bars. Like they just have this sport brand that CrossFit could really use and they have the finances to come in and be supportive without expecting a short-term ROI. Mm-hmm. Some of the companies in CrossFit, which this is not a bad thing, they, they need to see a short-term ROI in, in order to justify continuing to support athletes. Yep. They, 
you know, their budgets are built on their current revenue. They don't have billions of dollars and in investments and they're not a public company or whatever. So, and then I think of Nike, like it would be Nike was and is in the space to a degree. Um, but Nike is one of the most successful companies in the world and they build their brand based off of elite sports. And I think CrossFit is the most impressive sport in existence, in my opinion. And I think that uh, Nike could do better um, by being more involved in the sport. So mm -hmm. that's another thought too, but there are plenty of other companies um, kind bar, right? Like you don't really see any CrossFit athletes promoting kind bar. A lot of CrossFit athletes promote CrossFit endemic brands like brands that are birthed within CrossFit. Um, I would like to see more of those external brands that like health influencers or fitness influencers or like, you know, Globo gym style athletes are promoting. Like it would be nice if they were in CrossFit too. Mm -hmm. um, but they just, CrossFit has to prove that it's worth it, honestly, because that's an investment at the end of the day. So it's just a long rabbit hole to go down. Yeah. And you also need people to kind of, you know, get involved, not get involved, but like understand like how CrossFit works. Cause obviously like you have people that are from global gyms that are like, Oh, that's not even a pull up, you know, that's like a chest yeah. of our pull like kipping. And it's just like, that's not even a, like not even working anything. And so you just need to get people to understand what CrossFit really is too, to kind of help out. Yeah. And it's at the end of the day, it's, a, it's business. It's all about yeah. business, especially yeah. to these big brands. They didn't get there by um, not measuring ROI and looking at KPIs and, fun uh business acronyms so like snickers for example sponsored brook um i'm speculating they didn't sponsor brook i'm sure they did like a one-time thing but like um i'm speculating but i guarantee snickers was like let's try out crossfit who's the most popular crossfitter out there and brook was high on that list if not the highest right so mm -hmm. they were like let's give her money to promote our new protein bar see how it goes and then we might try the micro influencer strategy. And when I say micro influencer, it's like 20,000 to 100,000 followers. Um, Brooke has like a million, right? So, and maybe they were like, wow, her ROI is crazy. Let's start giving some other athletes money. Or maybe they were like, man, that's not really what we wanted to see. We're going to pause on the CrossFit thing. Like it's typically how it works from a bigger business perspective. Yeah. So we, like, we have to continue to build value in the sport. So other companies will want to come also add value and, and then gain value in return. It's about a value exchange. Long mm -hmm. search. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs>